Hi, Matt here from Matt Holman Golf. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the backswing today. I know it's very common to have issues maybe swinging the club head too much from the inside or too much from the outside. I mean, do you focus on the, the hands, the club head, the body, the shoulder turn? There's all these different uh, variables you could think of. I mean, what is the perfect takeaway, the backswing? Well, there's, you know, there's lots of different points of view on that. Um, I can give you my ideas, you know, sort of a, a relatively, what I, I would say is a, a simple movement we see in many of the modern swingers, guys like Adam Scott. Um, so maybe I can give you some ideas on maybe my two biggest influences, Claude Harmon and David Ledbetter and Sean Hogan at, at the Ledbetter Academy there. Uh, again, method very, very similar. I think you're gonna see these movements a lot in the best players in the world. So. We're gonna say setup's pretty good, because again, takeaway will be sort of quite drastically affected actually by our setup position. If we start to stand too far away from the ball, our shoulder plane is gonna be pulled sort of quite level with the ground, so everything's gonna move around. If we get in very close and there's no room, and really there's only one place the arms can go, and that's sort of away from the body. So sort of, if you feel like you're having uh, takeaway issues. This is sort of this, what I would say is the takeaway is the first part of the movement where the shaft reaches around horizontal to the ground. Number one, check your basic, your setups, knee flex, weight distribution, sure it's not too much in your toes or in the heels. Distance from the ball, I do about a hand span. I mean, very little, this is sort of exact science. And for me, again, I would draw a line down that shaft. You can look at some of the sort of the swing reviews and those coaches I mentioned, this is what they would be doing also. And for me, I like to feel the hands stay relatively close to the right thigh. Someone like a David Ledbetter would talk about a thumb width gap. I remember with Claude Harmon, he used to hold a shaft here directly on my hands and actually another one under the shaft. And he talked about sort of two straight lines. So my hands would stay relatively in, the club head stays out. Okay, we don't need any sort of early rotation of the club face. We certainly don't want to be sort of narrow. We don't need to be incredibly wide. I like this sort of theory. We retain the radius of the circle, the length of the arms. So from there, really, the, the initial part for me is it, it's a sort of uh, upper chest, shoulders, hands and arms, sort of that classic one piece takeaway. The hands are staying in. The club face will stay looking at the golf ball there. And really for me, a reference point I like to work to, when the shaft is level with the ground, I like to have a little angle in the club head, depending on the method. Something like a peak cow will be quite toe up there. So this leading edge points to the skies. Other guys will be sort of the line of the club face more matching the, the spine. I think both of those can work. So the hands stay in a little, the shaft actually I like to see pointing on the left thigh. Now, when we actually swing in reality, what you'll tend to find is the club will move a little more inside there, but that's certainly feelings to practice. So this place here, I know it's sort of a Tommy Fleetwood drill again, those sort of David Ledbetter have seen practicing or working with players on the hand stay in, this sort of theme here. And then you can go ahead and just make some little back swings there. So there's my move. And then just go ahead and do some little rotations and clips and shots away. You know, critical in that short game, in, in your full swing. If we can sort of start right that movement, we've got half a chance. Um, and again, from the face on, just a, a simple movement. Maybe the left knee starts to work down in infraction. We certainly don't want to over uh, use the legs. You can stay relatively centered with the hips. That's quite stable. And again, that slight upper body movement. We have pretty good width there. The left arm is straight, but comfortably straight. And then again, from there, we're just turning through. So for me, that's your classic sort of stage one, if we said. It's a great practice in the mirror. This is that, what they call keeping the club head slightly outside the hands. Critical, we're staying in our angles. We don't want to be raising at all. Even a slight pressure down in the chest is a good thing. And then from there we go ahead and we can clip some away. 
And then from there, you know, long, we then would maybe move on to the halfway back position. And then you're going to end up a little longer back and through to, to end up more into the, the full